This, so maybe I should turn the reverb off when I talk, or is it okay? Do you like, it's okay? Thank you. You have just become my favorite audience of my life. <laughs> but for more than one reason. First of all, I would like to thank my, my dear friend. You have, in the shortest amount of time, Patty Slezak and I have just like formed a bond. Um, when Carl Latham, are my my uh, you're my drummer you know that right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> when when Carl introduced me to Patty uh, online um, we we ended up you know having some conversations online then it turned to the phone then we discovered that um, I had played with her dad back in New York back in the day in the 80s at jazz at noon many times so Dick Slezak was a terrific jazz trombone player. And yeah, <laughs> friends for life now. Yes. So uh, I, I won't go into all of the connections that we've discovered we had because we have to be out of the library by nine. So <laughs> <laughs> that first tune um, that this amazing band played um, was by Chick Corea. It's called Windows. It was actually um, the, the first track on my, uh, my first Concord uh, Records release, which was back in the early 90s, um, Portraits in Silver. And um, for many years, it kind of became my signature song. I, I loved it so much. Um, it's, you know, it's such a beautiful melody, and, and the, uh, the harmonies are so great you know, for us all to play over. Um, and, and Chick Corea, you know, I mean, we all revered him. Um, I, I have heard him many times, and I met him when we were both playing the Monterey Jazz Festival a few years back. He was playing with some piano player named uh, Herbie. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, so um, when he passed, I kind of stopped playing Windows for a little while. And then this month, with these guys, I, I just was completely inspired to, okay, we're playing, we're, we're opening with Windows now. So we've been doing it for the, I, this is a three week tour. This is the final concert of a 13 concert four state tour. So we could not be happier to be right here with all of you at the Wayne Public Library. And, and I think the rain even stopped, right? So. I would love to introduce you to these guys. They're like the best of the best. Larry Ham on the piano. Oh, um, <laughs> Lou Pappas on the bass. And I don't have to introduce you, but I will. Carl Latham on the bass. Going back to New York, I was, I was born in New York City. I grew up in Westchester County in Ormonk, New York. And um, um, I, I was born into a musical family. My dad, uh, jazz guitarist Art Ryerson. Um, John and I were just talking about amps. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure Gail was tired of hearing about amps. But <laughs> um, uh, so my dad was a jazz guitarist. He got his start with, uh, during the big band era with Paul Whiteman, later went on to become a, a top studio musician in New York City. 
recorded with everybody from uh, Louis Armstrong to Charlie Parker and, and um, three older brothers, everybody's a, a musician. And I have um, the fondest memories of when I was a teenager taking uh, the train in with uh, one of my brothers, uh, my brother Rich, and on Monday nights to go to the Village Vanguard to hear the Thad Jones, Mel Lewis big band. This next tune we're gonna play was written by Thad Jones, who happens to be one of the great com composers um, in, in the, the jazz genre. Um, the name of this tune is Three and One. Um, the album that um, it was on was called Keeping Up with the Joneses. He came from musical royalty. His brothers were Hank Jones, the pianist, and Elvin Jones, the drummer. Uh, these are, you know, legends. And there was one other Jones, but he was not one of the brothers. So the, the, the um, yeah, so uh, keeping up with the Joneses. And three and one is the title of this tune. So it's, you know, the three brothers plus one Jones. So here is three and one. On the alto flute, don't get me started. <laughs> Wendy Stern, do you want to explain that? <laughs> How can we explain this instrument? So it's, uh, um, well, you'll hear it. We'll talk about it later. Let's do that. I think that's the best idea. Okay.
so much. By the way, it's so so nice to see so many friends here. Um, this is uh, the feeling that um, I think all of us musicians have been um, experiencing ever since we came out of our homes after the pandemic. Um, that feeling of joy to reconnect with live audiences again um, hasn't gone away. It just hasn't gone away. And I have this feeling, um, they, you know, po the Pollyanna in me believes that that feeling is, is here to stay. So thank you uh, again for supporting live music because this whole thing that happens, you are a part of it. You inspire us. To play so this is that's that is like the most important part of this whole equation so um uh although we're keeping the money no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh okay so um this instrument and brazilian music go hand in hand um this next song we're going to play uh nada como ter amor which means um there's nothing like being in love um, was written by a, a wonderful Brazilian composer who we just lost in December, uh, Carlos Lira. So this is, uh, we call it Nada for short. Thank you. 
I am definitely warm now. <laughs> oh, I like it that the jackets are coming off. <laughs> This next song is, um, is certainly one of my favorite ballads, and um, I have been enjoying this entire month playing it with, uh, with Larry Ham and, and this um, amazing rhythm section. Um, the title of the song is My One and Only Love, and I should tell you that I usually dedicate it to my flute. <laughs>
so much. What a wonder, wonderful audience. Wow. Um, so the pandemic hit and um, we all found ourselves, all of us, at home. And um, for, for musicians, I mean, I can speak for myself, but I know I speak for all musicians in, in this audience, in this room. And um, we still wanted to play, you know, so um, Anderson Etudes, you know, it was sort of like anything. Um, but um, the teaching all went online. And so some of the jazz flute classes that I had been doing, all of a sudden, you know, it's like, how do I, how do, I do this? How do I make it interesting, productive for both my students and uh, for, you know, for myself? Um, so what I ended up doing was I started composing jazz solos on jazz standards. So it wasn't a matter of like just playing a jazz solo and transcribing it. It was more the process of when I actually composed new music, but um, I, I just had to com come up with the melody because the chord changes were already there. Ah, oh, what a good idea. So anyway, it turns out I had a ball doing it. Um, my students, like, loved it because it also bridged the gap between the, the very experienced uh, jazz flutist and the aspiring jazz flutist. So I could teach jazz style, articulation, all that kind of stuff. Okay, then, um, um, you know, a year and a half later, I finally started accepting some, some gigs and some concerts. So I remember very distinctly, the first one that I played was in Santa Fe. And um, I thought, you know, it would be fun if I torture <laughs> the rhythm section and send some of these solos ahead of time and we'll weave them into these jazz standards um, as part of the arrangement. And because these are written for the flute, they're not easy for like, you know, other human beings. And these guys <laughs> nail them. It's unbelievable. So, so this particular one, uh, Solar by Chuck Wayne. Yes. <laughs> You'll hear the melody like way later tomorrow. <laughs>
so much. Switch to this instrument, the alto flute, which is, um, uh, well, you can see it's, it's bigger. The, um, the tube, the bore is bigger. Um, it has this curve, so for me, it's in the same hand position. So I'm not like that. But the, the, the main difference is it's, it's lower in pitch. It's a transposing instrument. And um, so this, this flute is, in, is the C flute. It's in the same concert key as the piano. The low C on that flute is the middle C on piano. If I finger the same uh, fingering as low C, it actually comes out G below. Oh, isn't that nice? So it happens to be the perfect instrument to play with. So what is that stop that's on, on the keyboard? What is that stop? Oh, it's like a, like a fender, uh, kind of like, like a fender. Kind of like a fender Rhodes. Remember them? <laughs> so it kind of fits the uh, the Brazilian thing again. Yvonne Linz is um, alive and well and composing some of the most beautiful uh, Brazilian songs. This is one of one of our favorites, Comissar de Novo. It's it's like a, a new start. The English title. Um, the, uh, the Bergmans uh, wrote, uh, wrote lyrics, and the English title is The Island. So here's Commissar de Novo.
Is that the most gorgeous song? Oh, every time. Oh, music is, music continues to blow my mind. <laughs> so I love it. We are at the end of our program. I think they're, are they locking the doors yet? Um, but I, I have to, um, I always like to warn you, we, after this we have an encore, so. I, you didn't hear that from me. Okay. Um, so we're going to play um, in, I think it's within 100 years of Wes Montgomery's birthday. And, you know, one of, one of the jazz guitar icons of, of our generation, and actually many generations. So this is a great tune he wrote um, called Mr. Walker. Very groovy tune, by the way. <laughs> There's an aisle dancing. <laughs>
and the Wayne Public Library for, yeah. for producing this concert series. We love you. We will close um, with a, a beautiful Brazilian song written by a, a dear friend of mine, Lea Freire. Yes. And, um, yes, Wendy knows Lea. <laughs> and um, uh, this lady is from Sao Paulo. And she is a triple threat. She's a marvelous composer, pianist, and flutist, and one of the dearest people you, you could ever hope to meet. And she wrote this song, Fay. It's titled Fay in Portuguese, and the English translation is Faith.